You're listening to the Stay Sore Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Stay Sore Podcast. I'm your host, Bo Skitsko, and today we're going to talk about how to properly set goals. The thing is, if you set the wrong goals, the outcome will be not what you wanted. If you set the wrong goals, you are more likely to fail or to quit. So let's talk about how to properly set goals. This is going to be applicable to health and fitness because this is a health and fitness channel slash podcast, but also in life in general. These are universal and it's not going to be just your average stuff that everyone talks about. It's going to be a little bit of outside the box thinking. So the average quote unquote guru would tell you to set quote unquote SMART goals. SMART is an acronym that stands for SMART as an S stands for specific M stands for measurable, A stands for attainable, R stands for realistic, and T stands for time bond goals. So smart goals. Yes, this is very important, but let's go beyond that. So I'm going to give you five things you need to think about when you set goals. I'll leave in the comments below if it helped and which one stands out the most. So number one I would like to talk about is what are the thing that you're willing to give up, what is the sacrifice that you're willing to do to achieve your goal? The reason why I'm saying this is that a lot of people set goals like, I want to look like this person, I want to look like that person when it comes to like body image and fitness, but also I want to have this house, I want to have this salary and so on. I want to have that kind of family or that kind of lifestyle. But are you willing to do what that person is willing to do? Are you going to give up what that person is giving up? If you want to have a certain body, right? Are you willing to work out as hard as that person, diet as hard as that person, measure all your food, measure all your uh, carbs, proteins, and fats, and then write out your programs and never like uh, skip a workout. Are you willing to, like, if you want to have that salary, to work as hard, to wake up early and go to bed late, sacrifice family time and so on? If you want to have a certain lifestyle, are you willing to do what that person does? So a lot of people set goals that they want, but never think what it's going to take to get there. So I want you to reverse engineer your goals and think, what am I willing to do? And then set that kind of goal. That is going to be a very humbling and sometimes even painful experience. I'm not willing to do what it takes. So I'm just going to lower my goals. It is painful. And actually that, that process will show you what kind of person you are. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's actually going to help you to maybe become a different person in the process of setting your goal. Maybe you're going to realize, whoa, Maybe I need to up my game and then achieve more out of that. Maybe I need to become a different person, a more go-getter person, a more disciplined person, a more whatever it is. So think, what am I willing to do? And then set according goals to that. Number two, you need to set loud goals. Set loud goals. I have a whole chapter in my book, the Stay Sore book, that you can obviously buy on Amazon, but I have a whole chapter on that. Set loud goals. Why is that so important? Because if you set a goal in your mind, first of all, you have to write it down because your goal is going to keep changing and changing as you get more and more, let's just call it lazy. And every day that goal is going to change a little bit. So write it down so you have something concrete, but also set a loud goal. And what I mean by that is let people know about your goal. Post it on social media. Tell your friends, your family, people that can keep you accountable to your goal. Why is that so important? Because if nobody knows about it and you don't feel like doing it today, let's, let's just stick to the body transformation thing. If you're not willing to work out today, today I just don't feel like it. You can just quit and not do it. But if you tell everyone else, then they're going to keep you accountable. And like, hey, are you working on your goal? Did you work out today? How's your nutrition looking? Because three weeks from now, you want it to be that weight or you want it to be able to fit in those pants or you want it to be able to do those three pull-ups, whatever it is, right? So set loud goals. Those goals need to be set out loud so others can keep you accountable and call you out when you 
well, don't do what you need to do. All right, the third thing I want you to think about when you set up your goals is break it up into small pieces. And I know this is something that everyone teaches, but I, I want you to think even deeper than that. When you break it up, break it up into daily things and into things that you need to do only once. Let me give you an example. For example, when I started my business here, the Bowfit Studio, the fitness studio, there were things I needed to do just once. For example, register my company, my LLC with the Secretary of State. Register my employee identification number for, for tax purposes, right? And then my occupancy permit with the city. Those are things I needed to do once. So I wrote it down and I was able to cross them out as I went uh, down my list. And then there's daily things. For the business, for example, in the beginning, I didn't have any clients. So daily, you have to post on social media so people know about you. Daily, you have to answer emails. Daily, you have to contact five potential clients and so on. So so I had to, to do one-time things and then daily tasks I needed to do to achieve my goals, my numbers that I set for myself for the business. So if you're talking about, like this is a fitness channel, so if we are talking about body composition, losing weight or being able to do something fitness-wise, then your one-time goals or one-time tasks for your goals could be something like grocery store, one time a week or one time uh, a month or every two weeks, I go to the grocery store. So write down what you need to buy, your like spinach, broccoli, your vegetables, your lean proteins, your chicken breast, and you only buy that stuff. No potato chips, if it's not on the list, don't buy it. No candy, buy what you need, get out. So that's a one-time thing. Uh, another one-time thing could be something like meal prepping. So you weigh out your meals, cook it, put it on top of where you're done for the week or for like five days, one time thing. And then your daily things could be like my 30 crunches, my 10 push-ups, my 25 burpees, whatever it is. Uh, stepping on the scale to keep the accountability, drinking water. So those are daily tasks. Write them down and then throughout the day you can cross them out and feel very accomplished. Number four would be celebrate your little victories. When you cross those out, you build confidence that helps you to push through the next step push you through the next step if you keep winging your goals you will not build a strong confident personality that will help you push through the next and through the bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger goal it will prevent you from leveling up but if you write it down and cross it out you will feel like a winner 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 every time you cross it out so do that writing it down breaking it up into small goals and then crossing it out and celebrating the small victories telling your spouse telling your friend posting on social media you see all those people doing gym selfies yes it looks sometimes funny but then it's also a little celebration of i went to the gym and i crushed it or people posting like they're like fitness apps that uh, tell you how many calories they burned or how many steps they did. Yes, it can seem a little silly, but also they're celebrating their little goals. Some people look at that and make fun of them while sitting on the couch, and some people celebrate their little goals. I burned so many calories. I did 15,000 steps or whatever. So celebrate your little wins after you cross out all your little goals that you wrote down. It's going to level you up. It's going to accumulate over time and become bigger than you. And you will be surprised how far you can get with those little goals, those little things that will accumulate. And then the last thing, the fifth thing I want you to think about is set a deadline. If you don't have a deadline, it will happen tomorrow. Yeah, I don't feel like it today. Let's just do it tomorrow. It doesn't work that way. It's always going to be tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Are you guys into superheroes? Do you know who the strongest superhero is? The strongest superhero is Tomorrow Man. Why? Because he can do anything and everything. He has all superpowers. Just uh, tomorrow, right? Don't be Tomorrow Man. Be right now, today. When you listen to this, think about what goals you have, what is the thing that you always wanted to do, but always keep pushing it to tomorrow, to next month, I'll start Monday, all this stuff, all these excuses. No. What is my goal? Write it down. What do I need to do on a daily basis? What do I need to do once a week or once a month to achieve my goal? And then set a deadline. I can accomplish this by then. If you know on average you can lose like a half a pound a week or a pound a week, 
Then write down your goal, calculate what it needs to be. It needs to be three months. I don't know, five months, six weeks, whatever it is, write it down and then go for it. And then it wouldn't be a stay sore podcast if I wouldn't leave you with a little bonus. And the bonus is this. Once you set your goals, you write, wrote it down into smaller achievable goals like daily or weekly or monthly. You cross them out. You celebrate the little victories. Here's a very important thing and you can thank me later. Document your results. Document your goals. Document your journey. Because two months from now, it's going to look like it, nothing really happens. It doesn't happen. Like, it's so slow. But if you take a before picture, and then two months later, you take another picture. A month later, you take another picture. You're actually going to see the, 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 the difference in the mirror. If you, if you actually work on it, obviously, right? But you're going to see a difference. But you see yourself every day and don't take pictures. You're not going to see the difference. But a month difference might be visible. A two-month difference or a three-month difference will be for sure visible. Besides pictures, document it. Let's say you write down this, the, the things on the scale, the numbers on the scale. How much do I weigh? Write it down. Okay, I'm half a pound down. I'm a whole pound down. Three pounds down. Five pounds down. That documentation will help you so much in building your confidence and motivating you to get to the next pound, to get to the next pull-up, to get to the next mile, to get to the next pants size. Document those little things and that will keep you accountable, that will keep you motivated. And over time, in three months and six months, you're gonna have an awesome story that will be supported by awesome pictures that build your pride, your confidence, and your motivation, as well as uh, make the story be a story more motivational to others because you have proof you did it and that will give you confidence to next time when you set your next goal whatever it is your body your fitness your uh, relationship goals your salary goals your income goals whatever it is that will be documentation that you can do it because you're awesome you're strong you're a achiever you can do it again all right, guys, I hope it helps. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hope I'll see you in the next episode. Stay sore and keep crushing those goals.